Hey guys, I'm Kevin Zellman and welcome to the voice recap on Q Hollywood for Get Real LOL, which will satisfy all of your pop culture needs 24 seven. Make sure you guys follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. We have a completely packed show today. So obviously you guys will be hearing from your top 10 artists, but we also have two very special guests. We will be talking to Victor Corrale later on in the show, but right now, you guys, I'm really excited about this. Let's welcome our first guest. He was first on Team Blake, then Adam Levine stole him in the battles. Please welcome Blaine Mitchell to the show. Yeah, man, thanks for having so me. So a lot of the contestants this season, they've been telling me that they had a lot of issues getting songs cleared. Did you have issues with that, and, or were there certain artists or songs that you did really want to sing during the competition? Um, yeah, the only... The only time I was able to choose a song was for the knockout rounds. Okay. It was Hold Back the River. Mm -hmm. And so, man, I was I was pushing. I was like, hey, look, if you let me, guys, if you let me do a song that I love and that I know I can do well, you'll get something like a performance like Hold Back the River, which was easily the best and most fun performance that I did on the show. Right. But when you get pigeonholed into, hey, you're Michael Hutchins, it's like... You can't do anything but that song. Mm -hmm. uh, did all the other contestants have a lot more say in their song choice, or does that not really happen until the live playoffs happen? Um, I don't think that's happening even now. Okay. I mean, I don't think that happens until the top four, because you can do an original song. Mm -hmm. um, there's still a lot of pushback in the lives, and then um, when it went to top 12, you know, I got booted off, and had to go see legal and go in meetings and all this stuff afterwards. And so we're walking to the same tent that the top 12 are in. And uh, they're sitting there listening to the song that production just sent them because they had rehearsal that night. So they didn't, they didn't choose that. I wouldn't have chosen my song. They gave us a list of a bank to choose from. Mm -hmm. But that was not the songs that we got to choose. Got it. So, um. Yeah, they're a little bit, they know what they're doing. There's mm -hmm. a science to it. They, they want a song that's good, but not great. Right. What was your process like before hitting the stage and like performing your song? Did you have a lot of nerves? And if so, how did you get rid of them or try to ignore them until afterwards? Um, so, okay, so I'm a sports guy. So, you know, just before football games, before baseball games, that's kind of in my blood. So what I like to do is jump around. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like we're hyping up, getting ready for the game. And so the makeup people are trying to put makeup on me, which I hated, by the way. <laughs> like, don't put makeup on me. I look like a clown. Um, but my process was jumping around, uh, you know. But then as soon as I knew it was game time, I just calm. Mm -hmm. And so calm the storm within. I went out. During the lives, it's crazy because you can't sneeze. You can't cough. I mean, you're live TV. I just, you know, most of the time I just sit, calm the storm within. I pray, and I'm just like, hey, Jesus, you know, you got me in everything in life, so let's do this. Deep breath, and then go. So it's a little bit of the calm the storm process. I like it. Um, you So you were on Team Adam. What, what, what was the best advice or the best memory or time that you had with Adam that's really stayed with you since, uh, since you've been off the show? Um... I think the coolest time with Adam was when I got stolen, and so that's when I first met him and got to talk with him face to face. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my wife, well, fiance then was there, and so he's like, "Man, congrats, you guys! Marriage is awesome." And he was just really down to earth, and that was probably the coolest. Uh, I wish I would have gotten more FaceTime with him, and you know, the show they make it look like there's a ton of FaceTime, but uh, it, within a nine month process i literally maybe had an hour and a half of facetime wow with with a coach is there something about your voice or about the genre you sing that you wish you could have shown to america that you didn't get a chance to like was there something that you were hiding in your pocket until you got to a certain round to let it out yeah uh hold back the river was perfect because i love that it's an alternative indie song the dynamics of the song is just amazing I didn't get a chance to show off my falsetto or a sweet side to me. They're always like, Lane, run around the stage, do what you do. Because, yes, I love performing, mm -hmm. but I also love sitting down in an intimate moment on a stool and, you know, letting the crowd feel that. So I would have loved to do something like um, 
Yellow or um, I'm blanking on Coldplay. Um, what's that Coldplay song? When you try your best, but you don't succeed. Yes. When you get what you want, but not what you need. Keep it going, though. I like it. <laughs> well, I gotta figure out the song title. You. There we go. Yes, there we go. Fix you. Oh, I could. Okay. Oh, I would love that. I would have loved to play some piano and then fix you. Um, you know, just more intimate songs like that. Maybe. What's next for you? Do you are you planning on recording an album right now? Are you in the studio? What do you have planned? Yeah. So before the show, my brother and I were recording and writing. I mean, that's it's what we do. It's in our DNA as a band. So we have songs that we have in our back pocket. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna try. I mean, contractually, we weren't able to record or do anything during the show, so mm -hmm. we hit the pause button on all of that uh, for about nine or ten months. Oh, wow. So now we're going to jump back in and keep doing what we're doing. We're going to try and get an EP album out with four songs. We're going to look into release, hopefully in the spring, a uh, four-song EP. Cool. So that'll be out. Uh, not sure if we're releasing it under Treeside, which is all our alt band or Blaine Mitchell. Um, because of the branding and right. all that stuff. It's always weird. Good stuff is happening. It's just a lot of, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing this for eight years now. So it's like, we know what to do. It's just, we have, I, I'm so thankful for the loyal following that we have from the show because it was like, people crave something authentic. They craved a performance. And I hope that they saw that in me as a front man. Mm -hmm. So now that the show's over, it's a good little stepping stone into the real world of music. Right. So, yeah. It's good. That's awesome. I can't wait to see you. I wish you the best of luck. Dude, thanks, Kevin. Of course. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll see you. I'll hopefully see you soon. Thanks for having me on, man. Of course. Thank you. All right, so let's get right into this past week of The Voice. The show kicked off with one of my favorites, Jeffrey Austin. He sang Jealous by Labyrinth. He doesn't have to prove to me, or really to anyone for that matter, that he can sing. Was this the best from Jeffrey? Not necessarily, but we all know that he wouldn't have any issue moving to the top nine, so there was no reason to worry. Next for Team Gwen was Brayden Sunshine. He chose Radioactive by Imagine Dragons. And now I'm not a singer at all, but this is a really hard song to sing for singers. And he told me that when he and Gwen wanted him to sing something more current, and that's why they chose this song. Brayden, I have a quick song suggestion for you. I think you should sing Stitches by Shawn Mendes. What do you think about that one? <laughs> All right, so next up was Corinne Bukowski. And as you guys know, Corinne has been in the bottom two twice, and America has saved her both times. She performed the first up-tempo song of the night and the first up-tempo song for herself as well. It was Selena Gomez's Same Old Love. And it was a very Gwen Stefani performance. I think she could have done a Lord song, and that I think would have showcased her voice a lot better. But I love Selena, so this is a perfect choice, Corinne. <laughs> um, I talked with all of Team Gwen this week, and they told me what they thought about their song selections and their performances. Check it out. I feel amazing. I felt like I haven't sang that song as well as I did tonight. Um, so I was so pleased with how I did. It was a really tough song vocally, so um, I'm really happy with how it happened. I think it went well. It was a, a song that was a bit out of my comfort zone originally, but I mean, I decided to give it a shot. So I think it went uh, better than I would have expected personally, so that's good. What goes into thinking about a song and picking the song and for the right voice, for the right tempo, all that? So the trouble we were having is picking the right song. There's a few songs that we were going through and we just needed to make sure it was the right one for this week. And when I first heard this one, I mean, we, as we were tossing ideas around, I, I knew instantly that's what I wanted to do. Um, so, but it's always important to think about where you're going next in the competition and um, if this song is going to get you to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully it, it does. <laughs> um, but... <coughs> It, you know, it's that's the big hardest part about the show is the song choice because those songs are what you're you're stuck with and you have to do them and you have to, and you're stuck with the results. And for your song choice, it's something that we probably wouldn't have expected you to sing. How did you come up with Imagine Dragons? Uh, Gwen actually came up with the song choice, and uh, I've been told a lot that I need to do a bit newer stuff. 
so I decided I'd give it a shot. I haven't really done stuff like this before, but I have. I do really like the song, and um, it was it was tough. It was tough to really get a hold of this song, but I think I pulled it off half decent. I think it was fun. It was good. So I asked them before what what went into your song choice for this week. Um, I just want to try something new. I've never sung pop in a performance in my entire life. I'm not a pop singer, but I wanted to try something new, and I really enjoyed it, and I had a lot of fun. And I just really wanted to have fun this week. And how, how do you feel afterwards about the performance? You felt good about it? I feel okay. Like, as long as I had fun, I, I, I don't care. <laughs> Next, we have Team Adam's Shelby Brown. Now, she and I have been DMing on Twitter about how we haven't met at the show yet, so everyone, me and her, was everyone, we were extremely excited to finally uh, meet each other, and I was excited to interview her. She had a powerhouse of a performance of Go Rest High on That Mountain by Vince Gill. She explained that this song had a real special place in her heart, and that special place was that it was performed at her grandfather's memorial service. Now, of the females that are still left in the competition, she has, I think, the most powerful voice. Amy Vashel was next, and I think I'm starting to sound a little bit repetitive here, but she again flipped another song around, another pop hit. She took on, get ready for this one, guys, In Sync's Bye Bye Bye. She created a jazz number out of it. So now, I love Amy. I know that she's going to go far in the competition, but here's my question. I, my one issue is... I want to, like, we've seen her been, uh, we've seen her do all these switch-ups and all these different songs, but what's her album going to sound like? What is Amy's real sound? That's what I want to know. I'm going to ask her that next week, so make sure you stay tuned. Again, I'm going to be repetitive again, but Jordan Smith's performance of Hallelujah left everyone absolutely speechless. Once I heard the song he was going to be singing, I knew that he was going to be beyond incredible, and obviously that's exactly what he was because he's Jordan Smith, let's be real. Uh, this song, I think, completely suited his voice so well. There wasn't a lot of vocal gymnastics. It was great. Um, so I talked to Shelby, Amy, and Jordan, where they all told me about their song selections, and Amy told me about a certain childhood crush. Check it out. It's a song that I've always wanted to sing, but it's so like untouchable that I didn't want to make the decision myself to sing it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it turned out to be a joy working on it, but um, a big pressure too, just because there's like thousands of versions of this song and it's everyone's like universal favorite. So there was a lot of pressure behind and it. Your song had a lot of special meaning to you. Were you holding this in your pocket to perform at a certain point in the competition? What made you finally decide I'm going to sing it this week? I actually like didn't have this on any of my lists prior to last week. And it was m one of my personal favorite songs to sing. Mm -hmm. I haven't been this excited about a performance since my blind audition. <laughs> Amy, I'm sure you've been getting this all night long. How did you and Adam come up with Bye Bye Bye? Oh man, it was another one of Adam's curveball, you know, song ideas. Right. Um, you know, we were tossing around song ideas and and yeah, once he got this in his head, he was like, this needs to happen. And, you know, he jumped through hoops trying to get it, you know, cleared so he could do it. And, and you know, once we started playing through it, he was like, this is, this is right. But let's just, let's just keep working on this. So, yeah, it was, it was hard. It was quite a challenge. And who's your favorite member of NSYNC? Oh my gosh, Justin Timberlake, hands down. <laughs> I, the biggest crush, you have no idea. Like, my... I know. <laughs> That's the fastest answer. Usually it's like, um... <laughs> you know, what if y'all poetic about no, this? Like, oh my god, it's Justin Timberlake. <laughs> Hands down. JT. That's a real Amy Vashel coming out. I know, it's true. <laughs> the 13-year-old Amy. I had a big crush on him. Now, Team Blake's is Emily Ann Roberts had what I thought was her best performance yet. You really can see the growth in Emily from week to week from when she started out to where she is now. She took on Patsy Klein's She's Got You, and she gets consistent praise from the coaches, and her own coach, Blake Shelton, even said that he's never had a better collaborator in nine seasons. That's a huge compliment coming from him because he's worked with a ton of people. Zach Seabot took on Crazy Little Thing Called Love, and out of all the performances that he's done in the live playoffs, I don't really think this was necessarily his absolute best. He obviously had no reason to be worried because everyone knew that he was going to make it into the top nine. So, Zach, you got nothing to worry about. And he didn't have anything to worry about because he is in, on the, uh, going on to the top nine. Uh, so, next is Barrett Baber, who, by the way, watches the show. So, hello, Barrett. Hope you're watching today. Uh, he performed Conway Twitty's I'd Love to Lay You Down. And what I liked about this was that it wasn't the typical Barrett Baber performance. He wasn't running around and jumping around on the stage. Instead, he was on his stool with his acoustic guitar for the entire song. 
it was almost refreshing to see this side of him. I really liked it. I hope he does this more often, but mixes it up. I still want to see him jumping around. Uh, Team Pharrell's only member, Maddie Davis, Amy Vashlified her song. She took on Girls Just Want to Have Fun by Cyndi Lauper, and this was a rendition that I have never heard before. What I love about Maddie, listen to this, guys, I think that what I love about her is that she takes on a different song every week, a different type of song, and it really shows off her versatility as an artist. I talked with both Barrett and Maddie after they performed, and Barrett told me what it was like to sit on the stool instead of jumping around, and Maddie explained her inspiration for creating the arrangement for her song. Uh, you said you came up with the arrangement when you were a lot younger. What was the inspiration behind it? Um, I just remember growing up and hearing that song all the time, and I remember loving it, but I also remember even when I was young, I remember being like, because I was like a little feminist, when I, I'm like that annoying little girl that's like, why don't I get as many crayons as the guy that sits <laughs> next to me? Like, I was just, I was, because I'm annoying and because I just have a lot of opinions. But I remember hearing this song and being like, this is actually sad. And this is about oppression. And at the end of the day, like, that's what it's about. And I was like, how can I make an arrangement? Uh, or a cover of this that really reflects how I feel about it. And um, that's what I did when I was 13. It was just me and the piano. And um, then I come on here and it, it becomes even more emotional because there's so much involved, like the saxophone and, and the strings and, and the whole band, Paul. I mean, it was, what ended up happening was just, my favorite thing that I've done on the show. You, you're used to like jumping around on stage and getting everyone crazy. You kind of slowed it down. Right? Yeah. You kind of slowed it down this week. How did that feel for you? It was really nice. It was, it was nice to kind of go back to what uh, what I've been doing for so long, which is just, you know, playing my acoustic and, and doing cool covers of, of songs that people might not expect. And that's mm -hmm. certainly what I did tonight. So um, really was the most comfortable I felt uh, in this entire process. And I think it showed in my performance vocally and and just connecting with a with a really great song, so um, you know it was good. It was it, it was a nice change, um, and I'm willing to do both moving forward if I get the chance. So before we get into the elimination, I want to welcome Victor Corrale to the show. Thank you for coming on, Victor. Well, thank you for uh, having me. Uh, first off, uh, everything since the boys has been uh, absolutely amazing. <laughs> um, you know, it, it was you know it was hard at first uh, when they didn't choose me or I was eliminated. Right. Um, I hate that word. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was hard at first, but I have to tell you the truth, and this is not like, I'm not just talking, but um, I didn't, it didn't really bother me. Okay. Because I knew, I, I, I knew the reason why I actually auditioned for The Boys. The reason why I auditioned for The Boys was to get my name out here in America. And you know what? That worked. So I'm walking down the streets in LA, I'm walking down the streets in New York, and people actually stop me for photographs and autographs, and it's it's absolutely mind-boggling. That's awesome. And, and I would have never thought in a million years, coming from you know a small country in the middle of Europe, Hungary, that people in New York are going to be like, hey, that's you, Victor, for the boys. Oh my God, let's have a photo. So, I mean, it was worth it every step, even if I didn't move forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. How, how did you feel about all of your performances on The Voice? Were you happy with them? I was happy with most of them. Um, uh, I was, my favorite was my blind song, What's Going On. Mm -hmm. um, but everyone, I, I, found, I found some difficulty in some of them. Um, for example, when I had my battles with the Sandra, that was a difficult uh, obstacle for me to leave because um, it didn't seem like a hard song, but it really was because you really had to place yourself in the proper situation so it's a duet we're talking about you're not supposed to sing over your partner you're supposed to keep that healthy balance between that and that's it's not that easy um, when you're talking to like a solo singer because I'm a solo singer mm -hmm. right but thankfully that was good my Alicia Keys track um, I, I, it came to be one of my favorite tracks um, I was very very uh, scared about that track because um, to tell you the truth I never sang that song before. Yes, it was a co-decision, but but I, that was the first time I sang that song on stage. So. Mm -hmm. um, and my last song, the All Around the World, I found it a super interesting song. Um, I never would have thought in a million years that I would sing something from Lisa Stansfield. Um, but as Gwen mentioned in the video also, it's her favorite song. 
and she really thought that I can do wonders with that song. And you you were able to be on both Adam's team and on Gwen's team. How would how did their coaching techniques differ from each other? Um, Adam was very very direct. Mm -hmm. So he, by the way, he's a super guy. He's a super nice guy. Um, but his coaching techniques were very direct. He got to the point very quickly. Mm -hmm. So he said, Vic, I think you're good at this, and this is what you're going to do, and it's going to be awesome, and that's it, right? And you kind of believed him, and, and you just you just did what he said because, I mean, come on, he's a superstar. Right. So <laughs> uh, Gwen, in a way, I would say is more personal. Um, I wouldn't say as decisive as Adam, but because of that, she was a little bit more in my favor because... I'm kind of like the same person. I'm very creative. Mm -hmm. I'm at times very indecisive. Um, I think basically all musicians are like this. And um, I had a really, really good time working with Gwen. So I, I, till this day, I still remember that band rehearsal as being one of my uh, most memorable rehearsals in in, uh, in, in, in my voice history. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can't pick between them. I, I have to be honest. So I, I had fun with both. How, how did you feel once Gwen stole you? Stole you? Um, honestly, you know, that was also like a bittersweet moment, you know, because I really wanted to stay on Team Adam, but, but um, you know, Adam had to choose between, you know, all these other amazing artists. And I have to tell you the truth, I, since the beginning, since uh, Gwen came up to me on blind auditions and whispered in my ear and, and said uh, that she really, really thinks I'm great, since that moment, I, I didn't choose her in blind audition. I kind of felt like, ah, you know, I, I kind of want to work with her. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, you know, I'm the luckiest guy in the voice. I got to work with both of them. So. Right. Is there anything that you were saving uh, to show America until you got to a certain point in the competition? And if so, what was it? You know, I think what I was saving was I, I really wanted to do a track that, or a song uh, that shows 100% emotional buildup. So um, I, I, I too, I really like singing ballads. And um, and I wanted to sing something modern also. So I mean, it, straight away from, from, you know, from the bat, everyone noticed that I'm a soul singer. So I've, I've always sing, picked soul tracks and they were a little bit dated, but they were my favorite soul music uh, mm -hmm. tracks. Um, and I wanted to try myself out, you know, just to experiment, you know, how I would sound on a 2015 soul track or, or not even soul track just something different so america would notice also how basically colorful and interesting i could also you know in myself and in, in, in all different music genres mm -hmm. i really appreciate your time i know you're very busy with everything else i really appreciate you taking the time to come on the show i appreciate it for calling me and uh Thank you to everyone. All right, so to, to all the fans that I, that my newly found fans that I, you know, in America, I'm super blessed that they are still with me and they're here and they're, you know what, they're even stronger. So thank you for that. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Victor. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Later, man. Bye. Bye. So Tuesday night, we learned that the bottom two, based on America's votes, was Brayden Sunshine and for the third week in a row, Corinne Bukowski both from Team Gwen. Uh, Corinne sang Colby Calais' Try For Her Save Me song, and unfortunately she did forget some of the lyrics throughout the song, It Broke My Heart. Um, and then Brayden, he took on Harder To Breathe by Maroon 5. That's uh, pressure right there with Adam sitting there. And But he also forgot some of the lyrics, so I guess for America, it was a, it was a fair playing ground for all the voters. Um, America instantly saved Brayden Sunshine, pushing him through to the semifinals. Next week, the top nine will become the top four. So now, you guys, I'm definitely not a numbers guy, but that's five artists that we're going to have to say goodbye to, and I'm already getting really nervous about this because I like all of them so equally. Let me know who you think your top four is going to be in the comment section below, and we will also be getting a performance from Ellie Goulding next Monday on The Voice, so that is also something that we should be excited about to see. Um, I, I love her new song, Now That I Got You On My Mind. That one, you know. You know that one. <laughs> Alright, so guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you guys come back next week where we will be hearing from Your Voice Season 9 finalists. We're getting down to the wire. We will also be joined by Team Adam's Keith Semple. So until then, make sure you guys follow me on Twitter at Kevin Zellman. And while you guys are following me, make sure you guys are tweeting me using hashtag voice recap. See you guys next week.